have with us, uh, Mr. Vijay Sarathi. Uh, if you are on LinkedIn, then you, you cannot miss this guy. Uh, he is, I would say, the best engineer. <laughs> uh, <around. laughs> and uh, he, he has a lot of knowledge about uh, in, in many uh, subjects, uh, starting from this. Uh, technical is, of course, is that, that to chemical engineering. Apart from chemical engineering, he knows uh, a lot about <laughs> Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and astrology. <laughs> so, uh, so he has uh, actually agreed uh, to uh, give a short presentation about how the compressor surge is happening. Okay, the theoretical, theoretical and little more uh, basics. So in the morning we had done some simulation. So this will actually, uh, uh, this session will actually help you understand why we did things uh, uh, this morning. Uh, all right, sir, uh, over to you. You can take control yeah. of my system. Yeah. And this file is here. Yeah, excellent. So um, thank you for inviting me. Um, now the, the the material that I'm presenting today was prepared almost ten years ago. When I prepared it, it was to train my juniors at that time, at, way back when I was in office in in Saipem office. So so the thing is that. The, we, are we are going to have to conduct this session in, uh, I'm going to have to cover this material in two hours. Normally what I would do is take at least three full days and make people do a couple of calculations, um, uh, you know, by hand, and then also make them do it on ISIS. But I think you've, you've already got some, uh, sir, ha has this batch um, done some, um, uh, did they build the ISIS model earlier? Did they do the yes, practice sir. already? Okay, yes, fine. Sir. So I'm going to. Um, um, so, so what what I would normally do in three days, we are going to compress it in two hours. But I'll do my best to keep it um, without elaborating too much. I'll get straight to the point and explain what it is all about. So the 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 the, the, the entire presentation is covers these following topics first thing is that wh what we what we would talk about is uh, centrifugal compressor characteristics the system characteristics means how do, wh wh what is it that you need to know to define a centrifugal compressor operation then we'll talk about uh, what are the different kinds of drivers then some basic uh, some some basic operations like startup shutdown shutdown means normal shutdown and an emergency shutdown and then the design philosophy. Uh, rather than go through these slides, what I'll do is I'll take material from this section and speak about it in the other sections. Then what are the key requirements for an anti-search system? I mean, to, to be specific, uh, uh, also, to, to also I would cover on um, the requirements for an anti-search valve. What are the different types of recycle arrangements you can uh, look into? And some general notes. And at the end of this, this tutorial, you've got um, You've got, I, I put some tutorials that if you if you can, three tutorials I've put here on how to size an anti-search valve, doing some basic um, thermodynamic calculations, how to estimate the set load pressure. So this is for you to, to work it out yourself. So beginning with uh, chapter, the first section. Oh, so we, we didn't, uh, <laughs> this, is, this has been there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Mm, one second, let me. Yeah. So, so, uh, so for the first thing that you have to know is you need to understand uh, the behavior of a centrifugal compressor. It is a piece of turbo machinery. You are compressing the gas, unlike a positive displacement uh, machine, piece of machinery like a reciprocating compressor. Here, you are using a radial mechanism to 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 compress the gas. Now, <clears throat> when we say Compressor maps dictate the behavior of the of, of the of the CC. CC means centrifugal compressor, abbreviated as uh, centrifugal compressor. So, the first thing that you should know is what are the parameters that define the behavior of a compressor. The, uh, uh, so, this whole thing is only about centrifugal compressors, no reciprocating compressors. So, first you have to know the three terms are polytropic head, actual volumetric flow rate, and the polytropic efficiency. I haven't written it here, but it's polytropic efficiency. Now, the, uh, the uh, polytropic, the first plot that you need to understand is 
the plot between polytropic head and the actual volumetric flow rate. Now, in theory, you can rotate, you can run a gas compressor at almost any speed you want. But as you go on increasing uh, the speed for a given uh, volumetric flow rate, you can generate that much heat. So let's say for a certain volumetric flow rate, if I operate the compressor at speed number one, it will generate a certain amount of polytropic heat. If I try to operate it at a, at a, at a higher speed, you get more uh, head. Same way as you go on increasing the speed, you generate more head. Now, in reality, you have, when you compress a blob of gas, its pressure increases, so does its temperature increase. But, so the, but before that, the three modes of compressing a gas is isothermal, adiabatic, and polytropic. Isothermal is when you compress a gas, the pressure rises, but the temperature does not rise. But that's not possible, that's pure theory. The second one is adiabatic compression, which means that when you compress a gas, the pressure does increase and so does the temperature. But none of the heat escapes the walls of the, of the compressor casing. Now, this is, is still theoretical because there is no system which is perfectly insulated on the planet. So in reality, you will have pressure and temperature rising and heat escaping out of the system. So it is polytropic. You have all the, uh, you, have, you have pressure, temperature and heat escaping. All, there are changes in all these three terms. Hence, we go with a more real world situation, which is polytropic in nature. <clears throat> now, polytropic head can be expressed in meters or kilojoules per kg. I use kilojoules uh, joules per kg uh, when I do my calculations. So what it means is that if I have one kilo of gas and if I have to compress it to raise it from, from an initial pressure to a, to, to a final pressure, how many kilojoules of energy does it require? So polytropic head, you can express it in energy terms or in uh, head terms, which is meters. You can express it that way also. So, and so, so, so yeah, where is the drop? Yeah, so so uh, so the first plot is a polytropic head versus actual volumetric flow rate. Is you for different speeds, the polytropic head also varies along with the actual volumetric flow rate. If you push more gas into the gas compressor for a given amount of work, that is the amount of power that is uh, pu uh, the, with a given amount of work being done, that is through the motor. You're doing work on the gas via the impellers. As you keep increasing the volumetric flow rate for a given amount of input work, the polytropic head decreases. So on the left-hand side, you have what is called a surge line. So if you connect the endpoints of all these, um, of each uh, um, compressor curve, they all, they all represent what is called a surge line. Now I'll explain what is surge in the next slide. But here, the point is that we, we are not supposed to operate a gas compressor in the such region because you will have mecha mechanical damage. There, there will be a reversal of flow inside the casing and your compressor can get damaged. At the same time, you also on the right hand side, you have the stone wall region, also known as the choke flow region. Again, we do not want the compressor to be operated in the stone wall slash choke flow region. What the stone wall push The same thing happens inside a gas compressor as well. So the the right way, the so the first point is the compressor has to be operated within surge limits. So, but this is only one statement. The other point is the compressor must be operated only within the a given operating envelope. You're not supposed to operate either in the stone wall region or the surge uh, surge flow region, because both of them cause mechanical damage. You can have uh, the metal on the impellers eroding and you will lose the guarantee and warranty from the manufacturer. So now to avoid, so in reality, uh, we would like to operate inside the envelope, which is, uh, which, which is determined by the manufacturer. But what happens is sometimes that you can have, you can have a situation where the operating point can cross the surge line because of let's say a process disturbance, it can cross the surge line. But to prevent, but so we need to know at what point should a control system do whatever it takes to prevent the, compre uh, the compressor from 
operating into, uh, from moving into the surge line region. So what we do is, uh, let me just uh, erase it first. So what we do is, <coughs> so what we do is, yeah. what we do is we maintain a certain margin here. This is called SLL, surge limit line. So the surge limit line is the point at which the anti-surge system will kick in. So, so the, 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 but I mean, I, I'll just tell it now in case you don't understand, no problem. We'll go to the next slide and I can explain that. Ideally, I should have put that here and then taken this there, but let's start here. So the surge, so I haven't shown here, but in reality, it's called SLL, surge, uh, sorry, SCL, surge control line. Surge control line is the point where the anti-surge uh, system will kick in and do whatever it takes to pull the compressor out of the surge uh, region. And then on the other end, you have what is called SLL, surge limit line. No matter what happens, you're never meant to cross the uh, surge limit line. In reality, what happens is that if the surge point, uh, if the operating point crosses the surge line, the you will see oscillations like this before it before the compressor trips and the operating point goes to zero. We do not want something like this to happen. So always, always operate the comp compressor within the, the, um, the allowable uh, envelope as determined by the manufacturer. Next, uh, this is one more point I have to cover here. Now, the, the way, so when, as an engineer, when you give your requirements to the, to the vendor or the, the, the manufacturer, what he does is that he tries to choose. So let's say the operating point is sitting somewhere here. He would try to see, he would try to match that with the best efficiency point. Although here I haven't, I've put it like this, but in reality, the maps could be like this. So if you ever, uh, if you ever get a chance to see the, for various speeds, so speed one, speed two, speed three, speed four, like that you've got for different speeds. So the idea is, the manufacturer would select an operating point. He would choose his impellers from his database such that the operating point will match your requirements and it will also correspond to the maximum polytropic efficiency. Now, here, if you observe, you've got, you've got an expression, which is, it is to relate the polytropic head with the pressure ratio. Now, pumps are for liquids, com gas compressors are for gas. Pumps use income, <clears throat> incompressible liquids operate with incompressible liquids and gas compressors operate with compressible liquids. So with a pump, the density can be expected to be more or less the same. So we straight away say uh, delta P, let's say DP is, um, is rho GH because the density is fairly constant. Uh, you can straight away apply rho GH, but in a gas compressor, because it is compressible, the density will also change. So what we do is that this expression that you see here is no different from that of a pump, except that we are taking into account the compressible, the compressible nature of the gas through the compressibility factor, the inlet temperature, the molecular weight, and the polytropic exponent. One way to define what is a polytropic exponent is a simple way is how much uh, the gas deviates from ideal behavior. So higher the polytropic exponent, the more, uh, the more it is deviating from an ideal gas. Then, so the, the polytropic head is also correlated with the pressure ratio. So from this, what we can understand is, if you, and uh, before that, so the, and the amount of power that is required to, to compress a gas from an initial pressure to, to, to the final pressure is, a, is, is the polytropic head into the mass flow rate divided by the polytropic efficiency. So why I, this is an easy expression, at least to me, because I use that because polytropic head is kilojoule per, uh, let's say kilojoule per second, uh, or kilo, sorry, kilojoule per kg, and flow rate is uh, kg per second. So when the kgs uh, get canceled in the numerator and denominator, you get kilojoule per second or kilowatts. So what we can understand is the more the polytro for a given mass flow rate, as the polytropic head increases, you need more power to compress the gas. Point number two, if the molecular weight of, of the, for, for, all, for, a, for a given set of uh, pressure ratio and process conditions, pro, uh, sorry, fluid parameters, 
for a given for a given so if z r t polytropic exponent for for a given set of data as the poly, as the molecular weight of the gas increases the polytropic head decreases and so does the power and vice versa that is so let's say you have methane and you have natural gas between methane and uh, natural gas for the same pressure ratio you need more power to compress methane whereas natural gas has higher molecular weight so it takes less power to compress so less power to compress it so for a given pressure ratio as the gas gets heavier and heavier you will need less power to 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 compress it second point is inlet temperature if the inlet temperature is, is if the inlet temperature is higher that is if the gas gets too hot the amount of polytropic head also increases which means you need more you need to push in more power to compress a hotter gas so gas at let's say 25 degree celsius you want to raise it from 2 bar to 10 bar pressure let's <coughs> some amount of some kilowatts it takes but if that same gas is at let's say 50 or 60 degree celsius you need to push in more power to raise it to that to 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 raise it to uh, to to the same 10 bar absolute pressure so to summarize this slide compressor